can't believe it everyone 368 days I've waited for this day I'm finally filming the reveal video of the hashtag JDM import the hashtag alone in the Gaia the hashtag alone in Southampton God knows how many hashtags I've used because I've had 368 days to think of this day now of course you could just be watching this video and think to yourself oh, I'll just fast forward see what it is and leave the video at that and once you've seen it a few of you will probably just walk away and think oh well yeah silly car I'm not interested that's fine your choice it's up to you but for the rest of you I would just ask for you just to stay with us just for a minute while we go through the little story to reveal the car that the camera is obviously sitting on the roof of at the moment I hope I'm not chopping my head off because the camera is quite high up and again that's the clue we gave you a clue in this video for the imp re reveal but um it's finally here and I'm really really chuffed that it is it was worth the wait now there will be a full video review of the car that the camera is currently sitting on in the future and there'll also be a video to discuss the costs and why it took so long for this particular car to come to Southampton and then for that car to be IVA tested and basically ready for me to pick up we'll discuss that in future videos but for now let's just say the JDM import is here and if you're thinking it's a Nissan GTR R32 R33 you'll be disappointed however it is a custom RS and because it's a custom RS it has 156 horsepower less than my Renault Clio so the car in question has a 64 horsepower three cylinder engine it's quite a tall car as you can probably tell with the camera angle it's a very spacious car as you'll see in a minute it has a CVT automatic gearbox it's really smooth and I absolutely loved driving it back from Southampton now we have found because I've been working hard this morning trying to polish the car to make it look as pretty as it can be for the reveal video everyone and my wife that was back in the inside she found um, I can't think what the bug was now we'll put a photo on the video now but whatever it is it's come from Japan it's not one that I've uh, seen over here before that was um, found dead in a cup holder I think it was so if it's not a Nissan GTR which I do love of course a bit out of my price range and it's a tall car and it has three cylinders and 64 horses which is the maximum horses that a certain agreement in Japan limits them to it's not a, it's not a, a rule for the type of car it is but it is certainly an agreement but more about that in a future video and what on earth have I purchased well I think for some of you at least you'll look at it and you'll go right okay he really doesn't buy cars for YouTube does he no I don't I buy cars for me but I'm more than happy to show those cars on YouTube and I hope and I'm sure some of you many of you hopefully find it interesting right let's get on with it this everyone is yet another car on the channel it's called Keiko it's called Keiko because it's a K car a Daihatsu Tanto Six months of Japanese dirt and six months of UK dirt. Gone. 
Now being a K car of course, it would have yellow plates on and I've had some replica plates that made already, these plates, that'll be put on at shows and stuff, looking forward to it. Now, obviously originally Keiko would have had, uh, I think they're aluminium plates, these are just the same plastic as we use in the UK, but they still show what it would have looked like when it was in Japan. So just a quick story of where this car actually come from, it actually used to drive the streets of Osaka but to travel to Southampton it had to be first transported I think by ship from Osaka to Nagoya and we had to wait of course for a, a drive on drive off um, ship to be able to get it from all the way from Nagoya to Southampton so through the Suez Canal of course we were able to track that journey uh, with the shipping company that the importer used and it was fascinating watching it doing it um, I think it took just over six weeks to get here but for me personally, well worth the wait. Just open the bonnet, show you the, that powerful 64 horsepower turbocharged three cylinder engine now. I have to say that the, the fuel flap, which is just there, is so easy to, you can see they're really close together. And the first time I did it, of course, I opened the bonnet instead of the fuel flap. But anyway, let's open the bonnet. That is one small, and dirty engine, we're gonna get that cleaned. Interestingly, when the photos were shown for the car, there was a pink battery there. It obviously needed a battery for the amount of time it took for it to be delivered to Southampton. But that is the, I think it's the KET CVT engine, and it's got a timing chain, so I haven't got to worry about any cam belts. Happy days. All right, let's take a look inside. As I've already said, of course, this is not a full review of the car, but it's a, it's a reveal video, and I want to reveal the interior as much as the exterior. And of course, Daihatsu, I think since 2016, has been owned by Toyota. I think the Toyota part owned them before then, and obviously there's definitely a Toyota influence going on here. That could so easily have uh, Toyota's T on there instead of Daihatsu's D. We have obviously the wiper stalk and the indicator stalk set up on the Japanese way, which of course means that the indicators are on the right, which also means occasionally I have accidentally put the, the wipers on to indicate. Now the dashboard deserves a mention because in the UK at least, if the car is under 10 years old and this car was under 10 years old when it had its IVA test, then the display has to show miles per hour. Now of course as a JDM car, it didn't have miles per hour. So the decal, a decal has been made for this car and I have to say whoever's done it has done an absolutely fantastic job because they've they've recreated the style of the numbers perfectly so I'm really chuffed with that. While we're inside we'll have a quick look at the sat-nav media screen. Obviously it's set up for Japanese and it also only has Japanese mapping of course or maps of Japan. I'm not particularly interested in trying to see whether or not I can get a UK map on this because well, I just quite like it doing what it's doing to be quite honest it's obviously a little bit confused because it's about five and a half thousand miles away from where it last was um, now somewhere here if I press that you'll see that you can have you can open it up and you can put a disc in and that SD card is actually just for the mapping climate control and as many compartments and storage areas as you can possibly imagine so there's one over the steering wheel we have a cup holder to the right we have a big storage bin down here and you can see got a CD in there just to test it out a bit of banging tunes on Resident Evil 12 volt socket another storage above the glove box and then of course the glove box itself I have got paperwork and the original handbook for this car I'll put a picture in that now Japanese now it's time to learn Japanese I guess now while I'm in the passenger side I just want to show you something else in the glove box that we didn't mention a minute ago it's still got fitted its ETC uh, card reader which I believe is for the electronic toll control so in other words toll roads in Japan 
and one of these aerials up here or maybe both probably control that but the funny thing is when you turn it on it talks to you I understood every word of that. Another cup holder, of course. And a flare. This seems to be a thing in Japan where cars need a flare in case you break down. There is also a little hook. Put your carrier bags in. Or well, carrier bags on, even. If we look up. Now, normally on, a, on such a tall windscreen, which this is a green with a blue shade band, which is really nice. Normally on a tall windscreen, you'd expect the mirror to be about there, but... They fitted it to the roof, which is, is really cool because it gives a really good, big, expansive view of the road ahead. But it does mean that when you're sitting at eye level, which the camera is now set at eye level, to look in the mirror, you have to look up. Just an observation. Like all K cars, you've got the um, wind deflectors on all the doors. The interior is in really good condition. I'll put on screen now what the report said about the interior. It was... It did say it was good, but obviously it didn't say it was perfect. But I have to say, yes, there's a few odd minor marks, which will probably not come up on camera at all. But otherwise, it's absolutely fine. All the window controls and the mirror controls, of course, on the door. Let's have a look at the back. Now, to look at the back, I'm going to show you through um, the sliding rear door. Now, just to explain, if I haven't said it already in the video, of course, on the near side, because remember, of course, in Japan, they drive on the same side of the road as we do, or the correct side of the road. On the passenger side, so the near side rear door is actually a sliding door. And if you open the front door, as you'll see in a second, you've got no B post whatsoever. So it's just a big, expansive gap that you can get in and out of. The kids absolutely love it. On the light tantos, both rear doors were actually sliding, but on this one, it's just the near side. The right hand side is the audition, so the offside is a standard door. They know how to design a car in Japan, don't they? And they certainly know how to build them well. And to be honest, I suppose when you live in a country where in the cities at least space is at a premium, they really have learned how to um, make use of that available space. Anyway, let's go and have a look in the back. So I'm going to open the front door first. I think you'll agree that that's 90 degrees. Look at the space. And then if you open this one. That's the amount of space that you've got, which I just think is absolutely fantastic. And if I sit in the vehicle. That's my drone down there. If I sit in the vehicle, look at the space that I have. And there's even space for me to put my feet underneath the seat. A seat which again has hooks for bags. Both seats. And the reason that this is shaped like this is because the seat will fold down and obviously you get a table. We'll show more about all the features, of course, in a full review video of the car. For now, this is just a reveal, but it's really cool. And then you've got lots of overhead storage, one at the front and a big double opening one at the back. St storage is not a problem. And these seats individually slide forward and back. To either obviously give you more leg room which we've got at the moment or more boot space whichever way you feel that you need but that's the view from the back of the car look at that space with that door open at the front and the rear sliding door just look at the amount of space that you've got absolutely phenomenal quick look in the boot now of course the seats at the moment the setup for more leg room but there's still usable boot space i could put four bags of shop in there and then under here we have obviously the jack and i believe under there you can just about see it we have an actual spare wheel all that in a car that's so small the seats do some really trick things as we've already said and we will show you that in the full review video for the car I'll put a little video clip in now showing a bit of a story and the collection of the car. First drive back everyone. See you later. Yeah. First drive back in Keiko. Happy days.
buy it. There's no white to dot, so if she's easy to push, she might look difficult, but I'm just being careful. Yeah. And I get her exactly where I want it to be. Yep. Fabulous. Now, there are a few marks on it, of course, which we knew about on the report, but again, I'll put that report on screen now. We're going to get all this done at my trusted body shop. Another one there. It's a little dent. Just see it there. And a little dent. Camera's just about picking it up there. As I say, I'm going to take it to my trusted body shop and uh, let them work their magic on it and get all that sorted because I want this car as good as it possibly can be, like I do with all my cars, of course. I like to invest. Some time and money in them. I love this car. This is my favourite car now on the channel, everyone. Whether you believe it or not. That's it then, everyone. That's the reveal video done. Another car that's joined the fleet, a Daihatsu Tanto. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the thumbs up button because YouTube treats thumbs up and, and all interactions as positive and it helps build the channel. What do you think of the K car? Let me know in the comments below. I obviously love it, but I appreciate it won't be everyone's cup of tea. Anyway, this is therefore car number seven. But car number eight is already sitting in a garage somewhere not far from here. I'll put a little teaser on the video now. But in the meantime, have fun everyone and enjoy whatever it is that you drive. See you later. It is another familiar car to those Wheeler Dealer fans. This one featured in the show, Dream Car. I remember chasing this car down, particularly because it only had 9,000 miles. Yes, you heard me right, 9,000 miles from new. So it's as new condition. Yeah.